So, how many of you have used WebGL before? Okay, cool, a few hands. Um, this is gonna be an introduction uh, for those of you who have never used it before, but if you have, um, hopefully you'll still pick up a few things too. So, WebGL is, uh, or Web Graphics Library is, uh, a JavaScript API for rendering interactive 2D and 3D graphics within the browser, within an HTML canvas element, uh, in, in any browser that supports it without the use of plugins. And it's, uh, it's supported in all the latest versions of all the major browsers, um, as long as your GPU is also compatible. Um, so what are people doing with WebGL? Um, games, of course, product viewers or model viewers for things like shoes, jewelry, phones, cars, sometimes with customization options. Promo sites for TV shows and movies like uh, Find Your Way to Oz, Gravity, the second Hobbit movie. Um, interactive music videos like Three Dreams of Black data visualization, 3D maps like busy cities, generative art, uh, particle simulations, and those are just a few of the possible uses. And most of these examples were made with the help of 3JS. And 3JS is a Java, 3D JavaScript library released in 2010 by Ricardo Cabello, also known as Mr. Dube. And the advantage of using a 3D library like 3JS is that what would take you hundreds of lines of code with raw WebGL, you can do with just a few lines in 3JS. And it has several renderers, including WebGL. We're going to use that one because it's uh, faster, it's hardware accelerated. And other features include scenes, cameras, geometry, 3D model loaders, lights, materials, and we're going to talk about a few of those in a minute. So this is the 3JS website, 3JS.org, and we just looked at a few of those featured projects. And on the left, there are links to resources, uh, documentation, um, like where you can find 3JS on GitHub, Stack Overflow, Google+, the IRC chat channel if you need help. And the first two links are for examples that are included in the 3JS GitHub repo, and more examples by Lee Stemkowski. And Unlike the featured projects, the examples are demos of individual features or techniques, and your projects will usually end up being a combination of those features. And between those two example links, there's over 300 examples. Um, and we're gonna go through all 300 of them right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding, but there is a link to a, a getting started page um, that shows you how to set up a scene with a simple cube, and, and this is the most basic 3JS example. So let's look at the code for this. This is the HTML. So you just include the 3JS, uh, the main 3JS file, and then your JavaScript goes after that. And the JavaScript looks like this. Um, all 3JS projects um, have at least these three things, a scene, a camera, and a renderer. So you set the size of the camera and the renderer, and you add the canvas element to the HTML, and then you create a box geometry and a material and add that to a mesh, and then you add the mesh to the scene. And then by default, objects are added to the origin coordinates, zero, 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 so you have to move the camera out in the z-axis so that it's not inside of the cube. And then to render, you create a render loop using request animation frame, and this will get the renderer to draw to the canvas 60 times per second. So an easier way to visualize how all of these things uh, work together is with this node map. Uh, so you can see the geometry is made up of vertices and three-sided polygons or triangles. And you add the geometry and the material to the mesh. And the mesh is a scene graph object along with the camera, lights, and the scene itself. And the scene is the root of the scene. Uh, and um, Object 3D is the base class for scene graph objects. So cameras are object 3D, meshes are object 3D, lights are object 3D, and you have to add them to the scene for them to show up. 
And you can add them directly to the scene, or you can add them to other scene graph objects, and it will become a child of the object that you add it to. So it's, it's kind of like the HTML DOM. And you can access the children with dot children and the parents with dot parent. Um, and the children receive all of the transforms. Um, so there's this example in the GitHub repo. It's kind of an extreme example of this, but the cube at the center is the root of the scene. And each consecutive cube outside of that is a child of the one right before it. So when you rotate the cube, all of the children are rotated along with it. Now the, the transforms are the position, the scale, and rotation. And I'm just using tween.js for the transitions here. And you can see the, the rotations are in radians. So um, if you need to rotate something by an exact value, you can look at a unit circle. And the values in pi, uh, with pi in them, are in radians. But if, if you don't want to deal with radians, you can use uh, 3JS math utility to convert degrees to radians. And you can use the unit circle as a reference for other things, like animating an object in a circle. The x position would be the cosine of the angle, and the y position would be the sine of the angle. And you can also divide the circumference of a, a pumpkin by its diameter, and you get pumpkin pie. <laughs> I'm going on tangent, so <laughs> let's, let's talk about so about cameras. So there's two types of cameras in 3JS. There's the perspective and the orthographic camera. And the perspective camera parameters are the, the field of view, aspect ratio, and the near and far clipping planes. Uh, the aspect ratio is the window width divided by the window height. And the field of view is the angle between the top and bottom planes of the camera's viewing frustum. So you can increase the field of view for a wide angle lens. and uh, you can see that the grid is kind of cut off now, so if for some reason you can't see an object when you add it, you might need to increase the far clipping plane, because anything outside of the clipping planes won't be rendered. So that's the perspective camera, and the orthographic camera doesn't have any vanishing points. And the parameters for that are just, they just define the, the limits of the frustum. So that's cameras. And one of the... Um, one of the things I like to do is add in orbit controls, and that lets you move the camera around the scene. So use left mouse for orbit, middle mouse to zoom, and right mouse to pan. And this also has keyboard and touch controls, and it's really easy to add in. You just include the orbit controls file that's in the GitHub repo, and create a controls object with the camera that you want it to control, and then update the controls in the render loop. So that's, that's three lines of code. And you can also do things like disable the controls or limit how far you can rotate or zoom in if you don't want to rotate below the ground plane or zoom inside of an object. And I have a, a habit of adding orbit controls to everything because it's just that easy. But there's also controls for like flight or first person controls, Oculus Rift controls. And there's a few different types of uh, geometric primitives in 3JS. Uh, these are a few, the, and you create them all the same way. The box geometry, new, uh, new three-dot-sphere geometry, cylinder, torus, and the parameters for them are the width or the radius and the subdivisions or the resolution of the geometry. And that's about it for geometry. So let's talk about materials now. These are the basic Lambert, Fong, and normal materials. And the basic material is just a solid color, uh, like a silhouette. And the constructor takes a JSON object with the material properties, which we'll talk about in a minute. And the Lambert and Fong materials are two really common shading techniques. Uh, the Lambert is just a non-shiny matte surface, and the Fong includes a specular highlight for shiny objects, and the normal material uh, maps the surface normal to RGB colors um, to represent different angles of light reflection. And, and the surface normal is just a vector that's perpendicular to the surface, and it's, one of the things it's used for is lighting calculations. 
So if we look at the material properties for the Fong material, one of the properties is shading. And the shading can be either smooth or flat. And the flat shading uses the face normals, and the smooth shading uses the vertex normals. And you can change the color. You can increase the shininess if you want a sharper specular highlight. You can turn on wireframe, or you can change the opacity. And you can also apply textures in the material properties. But first, we need to talk about UVs. And each vertex in a model has an XYZ position in world space, but it also has a UV coordinate in UV texture space. And that just tells the program how to place the image onto the model. It's kind of like a soup can label. So to load in the texture, you use a load texture image utility. And you use that as the value for the texture map in the material properties. So this is the color map. And the normal map uses, um, lets you add more detail to a model without using more polygons by baking the detail from a high polygon model into an RGB image that's used to affect the shading normals of a low polygon model. And the specular map defines uh, the shape of shiny areas on a surface. So in this example, the water is white and the rest is black, so only the water is shiny. And if you apply all three of these textures, it might look something like this. And your, your code would look like that. So there's a few different types of lights in 3JS. The directional light has a position and a target. But the, those don't really matter because they're only used to set the direction of the light. Uh, the light acts as if it's infinitely far away and all the rays produced from it are parallel, so it's kind of like a sun. And most of the lights in 3JS have uh, a color parameter, so you can use that for warm or cool lights and an intensity. And I usually don't set the intensity above one because that tends to blow the light out. And the point light shines from a, a specific position in the scene in all directions. So it's kind of like a light bulb. And the spotlight uh, shines from a specific position in a specific direction. And it only affects objects that are within a cone defined by the angle and the exponent fall off. And the ambient light is applied to all objects in the scene globally. So if I turn it to black here, it's like the same thing as no ambient light, but I usually like to keep it a little bit brighter than pitch black or a darker shade of the material color. And a really common lighting technique is three-point lighting. So there, you have a key light on one side, and that's your strongest, most intense light, and a fill light on the opposite side that's used to fill in the shadows. And then you have a rim light on the back side of it to highlight the contours. And in, in addition to the geometric primitives that we looked at earlier, you can also load in your own models from Maya or Blender or whatever your 3D program of choice is. And you can load in OBJs and other 3D model formats into 3JS, but those require an additional loader file the loader that's included in the main 3JS file is the JSON loader. So you can convert a, an OBJ to a JSON with a Python tool that's included in the 3JS GitHub repo. So, so you just make sure you have Python 2.7, and then you copy the Python tool to the same folder as the OBJ, and then run the Python script from the terminal with two, two arguments, the input JSON file and the output uh, the, the input OBJ file and the output JSON file. And then to load the geometry into the browser, you create a JSON loader object, and that has a callback function that returns the geometry. And you can just add that to a mesh the same way you would with a geometric primitive. And one really cool technique that I like to use is environment mapping. And an environment map, or a, a cube map in this case, takes a a panoramic image and maps it to the inside of a cube. And 
So you can see here, if I turn on the wireframe and zoom out, it's, it's really just a cube. And you can use that for things like the reflection or the refraction on the material. And the last thing that I want to talk about is interaction. So in HTML and CSS, we kind of take hover states and click states for, uh, for granted because the browser handles those for us. But what if we want to do that in 3D? Um, in 3D, it's called picking, and we have to set that up ourselves. But 3GS makes it um, pretty easy. So this is an example from the, the GitHub repo called Interactive Cubes. So when you hover over each cube, it just changes one of the material properties. Um, so let's look at how this works. There's a, uh, first you need to uh, normalize the device coordinates, meaning the range of the x and y coordinates are from negative one to one. And then you have to unproject the coordinate from 3D, uh, 2D screen space into 3D space. And then you uh, cast a ray from that coordinate in the direction of the camera. And that ray will return a, um, an array of all the objects that the ray intersects. And the first object in that array will be the one the closest to the camera. And that's the object that you have selected. So this is the code for it. You um, normalize the device coordinates. You unproject it into, 2D uh, into 3D space set the ray caster, and find your intersected objects. Um, and this code could go in either the mouse move or the mouse down event handler, depending on whether you want a hover state or a click state. So using all the things we just talked about, this is just a little demo I made uh, with a uh, musical instrument pyramid so you can click on each of the speakers here, and it'll play a little sound from an audio tag. So yeah, those are, those are just a few of the things you can do with 3JS. Um, the slides for this are up on my website at davidscottlines.com slash 3JS. And if uh, you have any questions, I'll be around. You can just come find me, say hi. Um, thanks for listening. Thank you.